Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rideshare Hub. I'm Jacob Letman. Before we get going with today's sweet video, if you accidentally forgot to use a referral code to start driving for Uber, it's okay. I'm gonna show you how to use a retroactive sign-up code so you can get your guarantee of up to $1,000. All right, all you gotta do is open the Uber Driver app. At the top of the screen, you're gonna see either your picture or three lines. Click there. Then you're gonna click Earnings. Next, click help or the question mark, depending on what you see. Click account and payment, then click referrals. Click invited driver, report my missing or incorrect driver referral. Click send a message. The invite code that you're gonna use is JACOBL17756UI. Friend's name is Jacob Letman. Phone number is going to be 307-349-7713. And the email address is goodvibetribe222 at gmail.com. Finally, under details, you're just going to put, my friend Jacob referred me to drive for Uber. That's it. Send it in and get your guarantee of up to $1,000 to start driving with Uber. Knock, knock. I know you're saying who's there. Orange. Orange who, you ask? Aren't you glad Jacob Letman's back to bring you another Ride Share Hub video? Boom! That was cheesy. I don't know. I have to do this stuff. I have to crack myself up. It's just who I am. Hey, welcome back to the Ride Share Hub. Thanks for being here. Happy to see you all. Truly, we appreciate your views and we appreciate when you like our videos. Give it a big thumbs up if you take anything away from this. I think you will today. This is a really good and important video. Before we get started, if you haven't started driving for Rideshare, jump down into the video description. You'll find some links there that you can click on. You follow those through. Get signed up. Get sign on bonuses and uh, all that good stuff. If you need a retroactive sign on bonus, that is down below as well. All the details on how to do that are in the video description. Um, so hey, you guys, what we're talking about today are five ways that you can always be safe. Well, no, not all. Five ways to help you always be safe while you're driving for rideshare. Um, actually, I wanted to do this video because just yesterday I saw that there was a girl in Utah who ordered a rideshare ride and she got picked up and I guess it was by a stranger and now she's been missing for weeks. So very sad to hear and uh, also have this video because of the 1% of craziness that is out there and there are those really terrible stories that we all hear that kind of make you like ooh. I mean the system as a whole is pretty safe I tell people because of the two-way rating system um, and it, it's not like you can get away with anything in the rideshare game either way because everything is is documented right so we can see who was riding and who the driver was. We can always track that. And so um, it would really have to be someone with nothing to lose that would go rogue and I, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to dwell on that stuff. That's a downer. I just want you guys to be informed and uh, be safe. And so that's what this video is about. So number one way to do that is to always ask for your passenger's name. And I had to retrain myself of this. Um, just because sometimes you're driving, you can clearly see who the person is standing outside. But I've just be, made it a habit. Every time that I pull up, um, they either open the door, I roll down the window and I say, what's your name? And they tell me what their name is, right? And I can easily match that up. And uh, it's a good thing I do it because I've gotten to situations where I didn't do that that's on other videos that's another story but that way you just know for a fact that you're picking up the right person um, number two so all right I the uh, here let me read this for you so lifts policy on weapons which they have a, a zero tolerance on those and that is no guns knives tasers explosives stun guns or tasers. Oh, I said tasers twice. Huh. So you really can't have tasers. Okay, now also, they will review anything that could potentially be a weapon in a case-by-case -case thing, and they reserve the right to make a judgment call on that. Um, 
So you can't have those. Now, pepper spray wasn't noted in there. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Here's kind of my standpoint on that. Uh, like with the pepper spray. It's not in there. And so I don't carry anything in my vehicle. But uh, I'm also a guy... It might, it's a little different, not saying that it's an absolute, but my girlfriend, she does carry pepper spray, and uh, I would rather have her have that if something came up um, and have that on her and get deactivated for driving than something happened to her, if that, right? <clears throat> so safety is more important to me than any job ever will be. So I'm just saying take make your safety a priority i think that's the most important thing i'm not telling you to carry a gun in your car though definitely not saying that um number three so this is a good one play the what if game uh if you can with someone else that drives for rideshare or just by yourself think of different situations that could possibly come up and think of what you would do in those situations. Um, and again, I hate to dwell on the negative here, but it's good to have a plan in case something does happen. That's kind of like a, a fire escape plan, right? So if something comes up and someone becomes aggressive as a driver, what does that look like for you? How are you going to handle that? You know, pull off the side of the road. Um, get out of the car, turn off the car, dial 911. Always the first thing that you should try and do is uh, dial 911 if there's anything that feels uncomfortable or unsafe to you. And it's tough too because we're in a situation where we're the driver, they're in our back seat or front seat, and if something were to happen, it's tough. Uh, and I don't, I'm not saying I have the answers exactly on how to handle that. This is a good way to play the what if game and come up with a plan that works for you if something were to happen. Number four, installing a dash cam. I like this idea. For some reasons, I don't have one. Um, and also, it, it's tough. So they're not, some states, some states require that you let your passengers know that they're being recorded. So you need a sign that says, hey, you're on camera. Um, and then other states or cities don't allow them. So the best way to check on if you can have one is to uh, get on your your local DMV website. I think that's probably the best way you can find that information. You can call the DMV. Good luck with that. But give it a shot if you want to. And you can find out what the restrictions are, um, if there are any, on having a dash cam. That's always a really safe thing, right? Uh, number five, the passenger rating. So, and I'm gonna say number five, passenger rating as well as areas. So know your city's areas um, because every city has their, their nicer and less nice areas. So it's good to know what the safety level of those areas are and then look at those passenger ratings as a request comes up. And I've turned down a lot of rides um, for, you know, four stars or even 4.5 stars uh, because I feel like you really have to be doing something wrong for a driver to go out of their way to give a passenger a bad rating because we do. We have to go out of our way now to to find that passenger, give them a, a poor rating. So something really has to, to go wrong. On that note, do your other drivers a favor. And if there is a passenger that did something, even if it's like, even if they were uh, talking disrespectful or had an attitude or smelled like smoke, I think all of that stuff is really important to document. Even if you give them a four star, um, I think it's vitally important. You're helping out your other drivers, basically. And this is a rideshare community, so that's what we're all about. And then the bonus, number six, and possibly the most important, and that is trust your instincts. So if you're driving to pick someone up somewhere and something doesn't look right or doesn't feel right, and you just get 
get a feeling inside, trust that 100% of the time. It is far better to cancel the ride and drive off than it is to get yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Um, actually, here's a great story. And it was a weekday morning, like 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I'm in a retirement community, uh, Sun City here in Phoenix area. A lot of old people. Uh, I had this ride request and the pin was kind of like in the middle of a street, but it wasn't a busy street. So I just parked on the side of the road and I'm, there was a cinder block wall out to the right of me. And I'm like, this is weird. Where are they? And these two people jumped the cinder block wall. And first of all, red flag, right? Why is anyone jumping a cinder block wall? And, and it was probably like a six foot wall. It was not a short wall. So that's weird. And the first person who jumped was a female and she got over and she kind of looked like tipsy. And right away I got a bad feeling. And fortunately, this is when I first or what happened? My uh, my car had locks, so every time you put it into drive, the door's automatically locked. I've since changed that. So, um, so she came up to my rear passenger door and tried to get in, and it was locked. And then she kind of like backed away from my vehicle and turned away, and I just put it in drive and took off and canceled the ride. Something didn't feel right. It was a weird situation. And um, I, anyway, the point is trust your instincts. Always trust your instincts. Be safe out there, everyone. If you took something away from this video or more importantly, if you have anything else to add, um, jump down into the comment section below. Let us know some of your safety habits or how other drivers can be safe. All right, thanks you guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, be safe out there.